this show has more drama than, well, a show produced by Shonda Rhimes. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 behind the scenes scandals and drama from the Grey's Anatomy set. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the dramatic scandals involving the cast of the popular medical drama Grey's Anatomy. We'll be talking about major plot points of the show, so consider this your spoiler alert. Ah, oh, you're ignoring me. Um, trying to. You shouldn't ignore me. Why not? Because I'm someone you need to get to know to love. Number 10, Ellen Pompeo confesses backstage drama. Go to the pit and try not to kill anybody. Let's start this list off by laying the groundwork for the drama, and there is a lot of it. Star Ellen Pompeo isn't the kind of actress to stay silent, and in 2013 she got candid with the New York Post about the feuds and fights within the cast. I care about my job, and I care about doing the right thing. Who are you to lecture me on doing the right thing? Are you kidding me? This drama was rooted in rapid rises to fame, and of course, to salary. ABC would allegedly leverage the cast's salaries against each other. Pompeo even wanted to negotiate her salary with Patrick Dempsey, according to what she told The Hollywood Reporter. You really need to do this today? Yeah, I do. Especially today. In 2017, Pompeo became the highest paid actress on a primetime drama, which in turn created new drama, with reports that her salary meant other actresses were fired, though both ABC and Pompeo deny these reports. The Harper Avery for Surgical Innovation goes to Dr. Meredith Gray. <laughs> Number 9, The Disappearance of Dr. Han. There's right and there's wrong, and this was wrong and illegal. When characters leave the show, it's usually quite obvious, ending in a tearful goodbye or a dramatic death. With Dr. Han, however, she seemingly just disappeared into the night, last seen getting into her car after fighting with her girlfriend Callie. I don't know you at all. Fans and actress Brooke Smith were equally mystified by the abrupt departure, though Smith hinted that she thought that perhaps people weren't comfortable with her character's lesbian relationship and that's why she was written out. I want an ethics review panel assembled. I want Steven's role in this investigated, and Bailey's as well, because she was her superior. Slow down, Erica. No. Shonda Rhimes has of course denied these rumors, and said the magic just wasn't there with the character. This doesn't take away the sting of being fired for Smith, however, or curb the disappointment of the fans who shipped Han and Torres. It is not in the past for me. It's lying on a bed in the ICU about to die. Number 8. The Petition Against Jesse Williams that's one of the many reasons that I'm so very, very proud to call her my colleague and my friend. Though this ensemble cast is capable of generating plenty of gossip, sometimes the drama comes straight from the fan base. Jesse Williams has been a huge advocate for black rights, and in 2016 he won a BET Humanitarian Award. His acceptance speech was controversial, focusing on police brutality towards African Americans. Yesterday would have been young Tamir Rice's 14th birthday. So I don't want to hear any more about how far we've come when paid public servants can pull a drive-by on a 12-year-old playing alone in a park in broad daylight, killing him on television and then going home to make a sandwich. Some fans didn't appreciate his stance and created a petition to have him removed from the show, arguing that his speech was racist and unprofessional. The petition received 28,000 signatures, while other petitions fighting to keep him on Grey's Anatomy circulated. Williams remains on the show and Rhymes has praised his speech, citing Shondaland rules against the petition. But freedom is somehow always conditional here. You're free, they keep telling us. But she, she, she would have been alive if she hadn't acted so free. Number seven, Shonda Rhimes versus ABC. You know who else is doing that? Nobody. So like I said, I'm a titan, dream job. Shonda Rhimes doesn't take guff from anyone. She didn't listen to 28,000 people who wanted Jesse Williams gone, and she definitely wouldn't listen to a few ABC execs. I meant that people who are dreamers don't ever do the things that they want to do. They spend their time dreaming instead of actually just doing, and the people who do are the people who actually get somewhere. As the story goes, before Grey's Anatomy aired, the execs were constantly trying to get involved in the editing room, attempting to tell her what to cut and how to shape the series. The president of ABC, Steve McPherson, allegedly even swore at her. I work a lot, very hard, and I love it. Rhymes, however, fought them at every turn, keeping the integrity of the show, cutting only one scene, and it paid off. The first episode had 16 million views, the network became more supportive, and the rest is history. You said five rules, that was only four. Rule number five, when I move, you move. Number six, Eric Dane's departure. You know, you're the chief, not the sheriff, right? 
Eric Dane experienced a lot of personal drama throughout the show. In 2009, a video was leaked of him, his wife, and ex-Miss Oregon Teen USA in The Buff, while in 2011, he had to check himself into a rehab facility for a painkiller addiction. It's why we're doctors. It's actually why we're people. But somehow we forget that all that matters is people. And whether we walk away leaving them better or worse for having met us. Even after all this personal struggle, it seems that Dane would have continued as Dr. Mark Sloan had the show not made him feel like he was, quote, a piece of meat. Apparently, he felt that it was just focused on his looks rather than anything else. His nickname was McSteamy, after all. McSteamy! Woohoo! Uh, is that what you call me now, McSteamy? Yeah, but I don't think you're supposed to know that. We guess sometimes you don't know what you have in a character until he's gone. And man, did the show make his death emotional. You see that? Not a drop of sweat. You know why? Because I'm that good. Now go get scrubbed. You're going to finish up here. Number five, resentment toward Kate Walsh's success. They were, we were all close friends until Derek found us in bed together. There is nothing worse than achieving success and then having someone else ruin it for you. Kate Walsh, who played Dr. Addison Montgomery, got her very own spin-off called Private Practice in 2007. I want to change, I need to change, and this is how I'm going to do it. In LA, at that practice, with those people. You don't know anything about those people! I know plenty! Rumor has it that her co-stars weren't exactly supportive and gave Walsh the cold shoulder, since many of them felt like they deserved a show too. Whether or not these rumors are true, there's no denying that the series was a hit, running for six seasons before it ended in 2013. But I need you to focus right now. I need you to focus on the baby that you're carrying, the baby that you and Philip created. Because if you don't do this, you both could die. It even had a few crossover episodes with Grey's Anatomy and her old castmates, and won itself a few awards along the way. I mean, if you take him off the drip and he seizes up, there could be permanent brain damage. We better hope that doesn't happen. Hope? Number four, T.R. Knight leaves. I know I'm not a world-renowned surgeon. And I know I'm not a lot of things that you've gone for in the past. T.R. Knight went through a lot of personal drama while playing George on Grey's Anatomy, but what we really want to talk about is the drama surrounding his departure. I would never hurt you. and I will never stop loving you." Apparently, the actor felt like he wasn't getting enough screen time. This led to a communication breakdown, first with the writers and then ultimately Shonda Rhimes. I tell you that I love you, and not one word. Where have you been? Been right here. You know, where, exactly where I was a year ago. He wasn't happy with George's cheating storyline in season four, and then he only got 48 minutes of screen time in season five, leaving fans wanting a whole lot more George. In the end, Knight wasn't fulfilled with his work, so George got a dignified yet traumatizing death. Oh god! Oh god! Number 3. Patrick Dempsey, the alleged McDiva. I'll be damned. Meredith was Grey's dream couple. Fans rooted for them from the very first episode, but backstage drama brought the dream to a dramatic end. Stop looking at me like that. Like what? Like you've seen me naked. Insiders and tabloids suggest that Dempsey became a major McDiva, showing up late to set and not bothering to memorize his lines. I think you can never really judge an actor on set, because depending on the dynamic of the scene, you are asked to plug into an emotion. It's also rumored that he started an affair with someone on the Grey's set, which Shonda didn't approve of. He was initially suspended, getting very little screen time, but he was eventually fired from the show altogether. Excuse me, Derek Shepard had a neurosurgery. Do you mind if I take a look? Shonda decided that the best way to write Derek out of the show cleanly was to kill him. Dempsey's reps deny these rumors, but McDreamy died regardless, and in doing so, broke many hearts. Are you ready? No. But go ahead. Number two, Katherine Heigl's attitude. You want to call me Dr. Model? That's fine. Just remember that while you're sitting on 200 grand of student loans, I'm out of debt. Katherine Heigl has a reputation in Hollywood for having a bit of an attitude, and it didn't make her many friends on the set of Grey's Anatomy, least of all Shonda Rhimes. I'm horny, I'm half naked, and I'm saying yes. You wanna stand there and talk metaphors? You wanna literally take off your pants? In 2008, Heigl withdrew her own name from the Emmy Awards since she didn't feel like the writers gave her Emmy nomination-worthy material. Talk about a giant slap to everyone who worked hard to make the show such a huge success. Is uh, you okay? I actually should Izzy, let's hit her with oxygen. Izzy, Izzy, speak to me. Can you say something? Izzy? Oh, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> she still
stayed on the show for another two seasons, but Shonda didn't take kindly to the comment and basically used the actress's name as a bad word in later interviews. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, on some, on some level it's sung, and on some level I was not surprised. You weren't? No. Okay. When people say who they are, believe them. Number one, Isaiah Washington and the F word. No, he didn't say the F word you're expecting. He said one that is much worse. I am not optimistic. I am not hopeful. I am sure. While actor Isaiah Washington was having an argument with Patrick Dempsey, he reportedly called TR Knight a homophobic slur that begins with the letter F. First off, that word is terrible, but to make matters worse, the controversy apparently pressured Knight to come out sooner. I really wish that you didn't think. I wish that you knew. Washington didn't stop there, however, continuing to say the word in interviews and to state that he, quote, loves gay, as if it excused his behavior. Washington was soon fired from the show, though he came back seven years later for one more episode. I don't want you to work for me. You just offered me a job. I don't want you to work for me. I want you to take over for me. There were mixed reactions from the fans, but Shonda believed Washington had changed. She also felt it was necessary to close off Christina Yang's story, part of which was intertwined with Washington's Dr. Burke. This place is yours, Christina, if you want it. Touched for the very Do you? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.